a clearly shady Slim Shady. Hi, my name is Hi, my name is my name is Hello there, heroes. I'm the Orange Ranger, and welcome to another Common Rider Dragon Knight episode review. We continue following the adventures of Kit Taylor, Toku's strongest himbo. Drew, Common Rider Torque, has Kit convinced that Len, Common Rider Wing Knight, is actually working for Xaviax. And now, a new rider is set to take the stage, but... Will we even see them appear? Let's take a look at episode 8 of Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, Kamen Rider Camo, and find out. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Yeah, and make sure you got your notifications set up by hitting that little bell icon. Right, 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 you, right, you. What he said was, you can consider checking us out on Patreon or Coffee at Orange Ranger Videos. One minute and 50 seconds of recap, mainly from the previous episode. We start with Wing Knight crawling out of some of the rubble from Torque's final vent. He pulls himself up out of the rubble, and... That's it. Theme song. That was a great scene. I suppose they wanted to start with something relevant to the previous episode because the first scene after the theme song is a brand new character in a place we've never seen before. Some kind of underground dojo in an abandoned factory. A student is sparring with the sensei and at first he's getting beaten around. The sensei says he needs to focus and invites him back into the ring. Unseen, the man slips something inside of his glove, and when he hits the sensei's leg, it's clear that it's injured, if not outright broken. He takes advantage of this and manages to win the match, but the sensei says that he cheated and has learned nothing. The man says he didn't come there to learn. He came there to win. It's so dumb. Oh, it's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! The sensei and the other students turn and walk away. As the man admires the wrench he slipped into his glove, who should enter but Xaviax in human form, of course. He says that cheating is such a negative term. He prefers creative problem solving. He tells the man that his name is Grace Maddock of Combat Logistics Incorporated. Presented by Zaya. The man calls Maddock a mercenary, but again, so negative. He prefers the term contract soldier. He asks him what he wants, and he says that he can make a much bigger name for himself than blindsiding a strip mall sensei, or an abandoned factory sensei for that matter. He can make him the toughest man on two worlds and gives him a green chameleon deck. Honestly, half of this show is just motorcycle porn. I mean, I get it. It's common Rider, and the Japanese show is very similar, but it's just half of these episodes most times are somebody riding around L.A. on a motorcycle. Kit and Drew are riding around L.A. on a motorcycle when they hear that shimmer sound and head to Ventara. They encounter a monster that looks like some kind of gun shark. They get blasted and Drew goes to use a card but grabs his arm in pain and drops it. Kit grabs the card and goes to give it back to him but Drew says he should try to use the card instead. I don't think that's a good idea. Huge kudos to the show here. I guess Ryuki first but they did keep the footage in and use it for answering a technical mechanical question. What happens when one rider tries to use another rider's cards? Kit puts the card into his reader, and by the way, the card very clearly says, Shoot Vent, but apparently Kit's reader has a little bit of trouble with torque cards. For one, the reader calls it Launch Vent for some reason. For two, it's two big shoulder-mounted guns that fly over to torque anyway. Torque says, huh, that's weird. Try it again with this guard vent card. But the same thing happens. Drew says, okay, 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 last time, seriously, I think it'll work this time. Try it with this attack vent card. 
in this case, at the very least, it doesn't directly go over to Torque. It just summons whatever that giant green mechanical bull thing is called. But Kit's not having it this time. He shoves Torque out of the way and uses the bull to guard him while he fires up his own strike vent, which along with Torque's basic attack, finishes off the monster. At Xaviax's fortress, we see him arrive with the new guy, and when the episode gives him a name, I'll tell you what that name is. He tells Newbie that this is Combat Logistics HQ, and then weirdly explains what he meant by the toughest man on two worlds, almost like it was something he didn't intend to say and now has to double back and explain. He says that the second world is the world of technology. He shows the man Wing Knight and says that everyone says he's the best out there. The newbie gladly accepts the challenge. So this is probably something that those of you that have seen Ryuki from start to finish can answer for me, but it seems like they had monsters that ran in kind of packs of similar themes, like with the antelope and jackal, etc. last time, and now we have another kind of shark gun monster. It stands on a roof and growls. Over at Grace's books, Maya is talking to her source about the hospital and what she found there. And this is an interesting thing I've seen mentioned about the Japanese DVDs, and indeed it was the case. For whatever reason, the Japanese DVDs felt the need to include an identifying subtitle for this character, who we are seeing on screen for the first time, but it's not as important this very second who that is, although I thought about it and I decided... I don't think there's really any harm in knowing who he is at this point. Maya is talking to JTC, the fellow mysterious rumor chaser that she's mentioned a couple times before. She asks how he knew about all this, and he says he can't reveal his sources on an open phone line, but the two of them can have dinner, and he can bring along some pictures that will further explain the story. She agrees, but then the shark monster snatches her through a mirror. Trent comes to ask her a question and finds her gone and the phone on the ground. In a nice little touch, JTC hung up when Maya stopped responding, and when Trent picks up the phone, it's giving off, some of you may be too young to know what this is, but the landline phones will give off that beeping signal, that idle signal to indicate that the call had ended, but one side had not hung up the phone. Trent asks... Aunt Grace, hmm, if she's seen her, but Grace is a little too preoccupied rearranging all the books in the bookstore by color instead of title. She does say orange is such a healing color, so at least she's got good taste. At the back of the arena factory. Listen, I've mentioned this before, but the exterior shots of Kit's apartment make it very, very unclear what kind of building it's even in. Honestly, most of the time, it looks like he lives in a sports arena. This, this scene is, it's, it's, listen, I like this scene. The idea is that it's supposed to seem really cute, but there's a disturbing undertone that means it's not. Drew and Kit walk back in, Kit still stinging from the damage that he took while the cards he was using for Drew went over to Drew, but Drew says they were just having some fun. He then basically tongue-in-cheek sort of demands that Kit give him some food, and Kit's got frozen tater tots. Been there. But the mirror calls them away again. In Ventara, the shark monster is dragging Maya down the street when Len shows up. He gets Maya free, grabs the monster, and transforms the energy orb that forms around him, knocking the monster back. By the by, there was no window or glass door or reflective surface of any kind around when he transformed. I think the rule is that the riders can transform anywhere without any reflective surface on Ventara, but for them to transform on Earth, they have to use a reflective surface. Either that or the show's just being inconsistent. That's entirely possible. 
So it turns out that Agnes did get at least some of the suits for U.S. original footage. As we see the new guy approach and watching Wing Knight and the monster fight, and then Kit and Drew also show up, and we see them all on screen with Wing Knight and the monster. The two suits are there in original U.S. footage. Drew comes up with a very sneaky, underhanded plan. Surprise, surprise. He wants Kit to run in and pretend that he's helping Len, but the second Len turns his back on him, Kit attacks. Kit is doubtful about this, but Drew uses the dad card to get him to agree. They run right into the new guy on the way down, who tells the two that he doesn't need any competition. Drew even offers to let him take on Wing Knight by himself if he thinks he's so tough, but he says that the two are just going to let him do all the dirty work and then steal his win. Everyone transforms, with the new guy turning into the episode's title, Kamen Rider Camo. Wing Knight, meanwhile, is getting beaten around by the monster, Somehow, isn't this the guy that just very recently held off two of these monsters without transforming? Maybe he shouldn't be using his powers. He uses Trick Vent, making four copies of himself this time, but the monster just sprays them all away with water. Trick Vent has not been terribly effective thus far. Meanwhile, in more original footage, and I will explain the reason for so much original footage in this episode later on, Torque and Camo fight while Kit tells them that they're all on the same side, they don't need to be fighting. Drew keeps showing his true colors, shoving Kit at Camo and shooting at them both. Kit complains about this, but Drew says that he's a marksman. If he ever hits Kit, it'll be on purpose foreshadowing. Xaviax, in his monster form, is watching the fight from his palace, and the rider count is about to shoot up again. Xaviax complains that Torque and Camo are fighting each other instead of taking on Wing Knight together. He calls on a brand new rider, a purple snake-themed one called Common Rider Strike, and tells him to send in another new rider called Common Rider Thrust. Bat? Dog? Which dog? Who's this dog? Dogs? On the Titanic? Camo is agile and hard to hit and knocks Torque to the ground. Kit gives chase, but Camo grabs him with a hold vent grappling rope coiled in a chameleon's eye and pulls him in closer. Torque recovers and uses his launch vent, firing a powerful shot at both of them. Kit is just barely able to summon his sword and cut free so the two can be launched away from each other by the explosion instead of being caught right there. As almost an epilogue to the fight, Len gets the better of the shark monster, but it uses a splash of water to escape. Trent calls Lacey and has her start looking for Maya and insists to Grace that Maya has vanished. But Maya's just over in Ventara with Len getting some good old-fashioned exposition. Honestly, it's quick. Len explains about Ventara and how all the people were taken by Xaviax and how Drew has tricked Kit and he's actually the good guy. Maya is visibly horrified by an Earth-like planet completely devoid of people. And Len says the same thing will happen to Earth if he can't stop Xaviax. Camo sneaks up on Torque, but Dragon Knight grabs Camo and tosses him back, just wanting to talk because they're all supposed to be on the same team. Torque catches up and tells Kit to finish off Camo, but Camo's card reader, which is on his left leg, is able to shoot out a chameleon tongue to grab cards. He uses Clear Vent to turn, well, clear, and escape. Torque shoves Kit, blaming him for Camo's escape, and even saying that he never told Kit to think. They then look for Wing Knight, but he's gone too, and Torque blames Kit for this as well. Back in Ventara, Maya is walking more with Len and says that she does believe him, and he has to try again to get through to Kit, even making him promise so that Earth will not end up like Ventara. Suddenly, Len senses something. He pulls out his deck, but it gets knocked out of his hands by another new rider. A gray rhino-themed rider, the previously mentioned common rider Thrust, who steps on his deck. Let's ignore the phrasing aspects of that and read the cards, shall we? Episode 8, Common Rider Camo. 
Pro's fun intro of a new character, Drew's sliminess showing through, and original action. Cons, nothing redeeming for Camo, complicates the story, adding writers almost too fast, and... I've really got nothing for a third con. Only two cons means it had to be pretty strong. Common Rider Camo gets 4.25 cards out of 5. It is a little formulaic to have these writer named episodes introducing that writer, but this one shows Zabiax going back to his classic strategy, and this time it's a fun one. A clearly shady mercenary CEO recruiting a man who's willing to cheat to win as new talent for his agency. I can't talk about the exact reason that Xaviax picks who he picks for writers right now, but he's always able to figure these people out and figure out exactly what will entice them the most. And in this case, Camo sort of breaks the mold, wanting glory more than money. Drew's sliminess showing through could be seen as a bad thing since it's making Kit look more and more like a himbo, but I think it's actually a very nice subtle character touch. Drew is confident. Overconfident. He thinks he's got Kit fooled. This plan is going to work 100%. So there's no need for him to really hide his true character anymore. More and more of his true colors, and I'm not talking about green, are showing. Willing to blow up Xaviax's monsters to earn Kit's trust. Willing to shoot at Kit, because he's going to vent him eventually anyway, right? I love it in Power Rangers, so clearly I love it here. Original fight footage. Oh yeah, I was supposed to explain why they were using original fight footage in this particular episode. So, Kamen Rider Camo's Ryuki counterpart wasn't actually a part of the show's run itself. Kamen Rider Vaird was part of a movie called the 13 Riders Special. So, while they wanted to use this rider on Dragon Knight, using footage from the movie is tricky, sometimes with right issues, or making the story work, or whatever. So, we got some original footage with the suit, which is neat. I'm not saying that every writer on the show has to be a good person, but there's this kind of disconnect here where Kit is trying to convince this guy that they're all on the same team, but the audience is already aware that Camo is not a good guy. Again, they've seen that he's a cheating glory hound. Kit may not know this yet, but if you want us to sympathize with Kit, don't let us see things that he hasn't seen. I think it would be better to have seen Camo first on the battlefield, have Kit's pleas fail, and then learn who this guy really is. I found it kind of neat at first that Xaviax was like, New Rider A, go tell New Rider B to do stuff. It implies that there's a far wider world than we know about right now. I mentioned the formula of meeting a new writer in an episode named after them, but we got two other new writers in the same episode. But you may have noticed that I said that I liked it at first. Finding out about both of those new writers in the same sentence may have been a little bit quick. You can still debut both writers in this episode. Just have Xaviax tell Strike, put our backup plan in play. And then at the end of the episode, Thrust arrives as a complete surprise instead of us going, oh, that's Thrust. Oh, here it is. But overall, this was a really strong episode. Intrigue, drama, and a real sense of the moving pieces as various plans slide into place. This is a pretty good example of how good this show can be. However, we've got at least one new writer to learn about, so let's name another episode after them and take a peek at the ninth episode of Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, Kamen Rider Thrust. Thrust attacks Wing Knight, thinking he's participating in a fighting tournament. Kit gets Camo to tell him his story and realizes that maybe he's put his trust in the wrong person. That's going to do it for another Kamen Rider Dragon Knight episode review. Thank you, heroes, so much, as always, for watching. Down in the comments below, you can let me know what you thought of this episode, as well as my review of it. While you're down there, go ahead and smack that thumbs up button to let me know that you enjoyed this video and that you're liking the return of these Kamen Rider Dragon Knight reviews. Until next time, heroes, may the power protect you.
Drew comment now. Uh, this went further. He prefers other words. Kit puts the card into his reader. E. It's a signal that indicates that she dropped the phone but didn't hang it up. That's, yeah. Whew. Ad libs are fun. So, it turns out that Agnes did get some of at least the suits. Yeah, again. Wing Knight by. Wow. So, there's not really as much of a need for him to hide his true character anymore. <coughs> Yay.